speaker comes first. Probably this is the reason why we are the first speaker in the track. Um, and now we're going to talk about the cybersecurity. It's a hot topic all the time. Uh, I'm sure it will keep its position because there's no way to say we are secure enough. Uh, but we will try to focus on the most important parts, the on components of the security, and we will try to identify what we are missing in the security structure and security precautions. Uh, you can ask your questions on Twitter. We will all be here during the event for two, two, two days. We will try to answer your questions through Twitter or in person. Uh, and we will take a few questions after the uh, speech, uh, if you use this hashtag. And we will be following the hashtag, and we will take your questions. Yeah, security is important in healthcare, especially because estimated cost was 5.6 billion uh, every year. So you should all know about the importance of security, but this is the estimated cost. Okay. Has anyone heard about the Barnaby Jack? No one heard about? Yeah, Barnaby Jack is famous in cybersecurity and he's famous in healthcare as well. Uh, he's famous with his, with his demonstrations on medical devices. He basically developed a software and a system scanning the insulin pumps in the room, like in the 50 foot radius, so 300 feet for insulin pumps and 50 foot radius for pacemakers. And he demonstrated that the software is able to detect the devices in this range, and he's hacking some certain type of medical devices, and he can change the amount of insulin, and which may lead to hypoglycemic shock. So it's a very trivial assassination without using gun or bullet. And also the uh, same situation there in the pacemakers, so he can just give electroshock and assassinate anyone without using a bullet. By the way, he was found as that just before, two weeks before uh, an important conference in which he was planning to demonstrate another medical uh, hacking devices. So I don't want to give some, some more information. Uh, maybe it's just in conspiracy theory, but that's the, that's the case. So he passed away now. So I'm going to look at the recent years, the last three years. In 2015, unfortunately, healthcare was listed as the most vulnerable industry to cyber attacks. I'm hoping not to say, uh, I'm thinking it's not in the same ranking now, uh, but it was so in 2015. Uh, definitely WannaCry is very important. We will give a little talk, because a lot talked already on WannaCry. Uh, but in USA in 2016, you know, one is a ransomware basically asking for ransom to unlock the data locked by the malware. One was one type of it. And 70% of the businesses in the United States in 2016 needed to pay at least $10,000 to regain their access locked by the ransomware. And cyber criminals uh, made around a billion dollars out of uh, ransomware attacks. So in 2017, data says there was a major uh, breach in healthcare, and data says estimated cost of that major breach per patient was 200. But at the same time, eight dollar was enough to prevent this attack per patient. Now coming to this year, in the first quarter of this year, again data from the United States, uh, in the first quarter, around a million da patients' data was breached. And that's, that number went up to around three million in quarter two, and for the last months, we had around 4.5 million data breaches uh, 
events. And out of that 4.5 million data for each event, 1.4 million was caused by a single attack. And this attack was spread through phishing emails. So emails, official looking, so th this is a basic uh, security awareness, but still, uh, unfortunately, 1.4 million were caused by official looking emails. Uh, I want you to be aware of uh, the numbers because numbers is potentially uh, going up in the coming years because detecting a bridge is in average taking around 400 days. Uh, regarding the official looking emails and preventing the phishing attacks, we will talk a lot about uh, this topic today, but uh, basically taking the simple basic awareness training and simple basic security, uh, applying basic security principles, you can prevent 70% of the attacks. Now wanna cry, so as a quick info, as a quick reminder, it was a ransomware targeting the Windows machines. Uh, it was using a Windows vulnerability, which is named Eternal Blue, and it happened uh, on May 12th, and it affected more than 200,000 computers in a day in 150 countries. And most affected entities, unfortunately, was NHS, FedEx, and BB. And according to NHS data, eight, of, eight out of around 200 hospitals uh, was affected across England, and around 600 GPs were affected. And unfortunately, some of MRI and blood test analysis devices couldn't operate because they were running on XP machines, which were outdated systems. So outdated systems is quite important. And one of the basic security principles that you need to be aware was keeping your systems up to date. And still, unfortunately, there are thousands of computers in 42 separate NHS trusts across England is running, they were running Windows XP. And still, uh, because of the software or because of some other reasons, MRI and blood test analysis kind of devices are running on XP machines. And based on our experience, and, we, and the penetration test we performed with over a hundred entities, each entity had more than a thousand employees. Uh, has anyone know what's, what the domain admin is? Domain admin is basically is the main admin who can have access to all Windows machines, including the servers. So based on our penetration test, we could Achieve, achieve to escalate our privileges to domain admin rights if XP is included in the network. And the success rate was 96%. And our research was including, uh, success was 96% and our test, the service we were giving was including the high street banks as well, well-known banks as well. So this is the case. And one single XP machine in one network would enough for us uh, would be enough for us to escalate our privilege to domain admin. And being domain admin means we could able to get the credit card details with the CV numbers because they were keeping the credit card details on the Windows servers, which is very common. Now coming to NHS, so. No, we, we should definitely keep our systems up to date. NHS Digital, we got the data. They are, of course, monitoring 10, uh, sorry, yeah, around uh, almost uh, 1 billion electronic activities. They're stopping 750, 
700 million harmful emails. They are blocking to 20 million distinct cyber threats, so, which is a good performance in terms of the technology. But one successfully penetrated email is enough to be hacked, which we had the uh, which we had in the WannaCry case. Uh, and again, according to our research, performed in 43 public entities and the governmental entities uh, and 32 financial institutions. Again, they are all uh, having more than 1,000 employees. The success rate for the ones clicking on official looking emails was 53, which is again half of the people. And they were not just important positions. And when we come to healthcare sector, again, based on our experience, uh, we, we just dealt in the healthcare uh, staff were, was taking the first security awareness training. After getting the first security awareness training, there's a progress because the number went down to 31. However, still, it's a big number to be hacked and you need to keep training them and keep the uh, success of the training uh, with certain KPIs. And this test also performed over uh, a thousand organizations with uh, more than 40 million phishing emails and the rate was 31. So you see the data is quite big enough uh, to understand the threat. So what we learned from our experience, you're spending a lot on the million, a lot on the infrastructure, and it's uh, very important. But lack of cyber security awareness causes other security measures to be trashed. Now we were planning to, actually, we were planning to have some live session, but we couldn't get authorization uh, from the uh, authorities. Uh, so uh, we will give you some uh, demo and how easy to hack or how difficult to hack a system. Uh, first demo will be about bypassing the security systems, host based antiviruses or some other security mechanisms by simply prepare malware. And you will see on the video, you are just choosing the options there are free tools. We will be using FatRap as a free tool here. There are free tools. Uh, then we will arrange the malware and try to be not, not to be detected by uh, the current available million dollar valued uh, security systems. Second demo uh, will be on collecting some sensitive data. Probably this was the reason why authorities didn't allow us to perform the legal session. Yeah, Let's try to create malware which cannot be detected by the security systems. Go to the Fat Rat folder and run Fat Rat script. Okay, there are several different methods to create backdoors using the Fat Rat. This time, I'd like to create a malware using PWN Wins, the option 6. We are now in the main menu of the Fat Rat tool. Type 6 and hit Enter to use PWN Wins to create the malware at this time. PWN Module menu appears. There are different options here to create an exec, batch, or PDF file. I'd like to use the second option to create an executable malware. Now, when I type 2 and hit Enter, it gives the IP information of my system and asks for the listener host. Enter the L host, the IP of your Kali, and L port. This time I use 6666. Use whatever you want. Base name for output files, I use the same format, 01-23-02. Again, I choose the third payload, reverse underscore TCP. The backdoor is saved to the output folder. Now let's go to the victim machine and transfer the file using WinSCP. Before transferring the new malware into the victim machine, 
Be sure that Windows Defender is running. I open the Action Center and turn on Windows Defender. Okay, it's running. I can transfer our new malware now. No. Defender detected our new malware. Well, we should try another method. The Fat Rat is very powerful, and I'm sure we can find a way to bypass the Defender. I'll try another method of PWN wins, the sixth option of the main menu. This time, I choose the fourth option in PW Wins menu. I'll again create a malicious executable with a different method. Inputs are all the same. L host first, then L port. I choose 7777 this time. And the base name of the output files. I chose the reverse TCP as the payload, the third option. And done. The output file is created. Let's go back to the victim machine. Refresh the Kali side of WinSCP and drag the newest malware into Windows Desktop. As you see at the lower right hand corner, Windows Defender is running. And it couldn't detect our malware this time. Well done. We overcame it with the first problem bypass the security system. Now, the main question is, does the malware work? I mean, do we have the back door? So at this point, we go back to Kali and start a listener. Start the MSF console. Type use exploit slash multi slash handler to use the handler. Set the payload, the same one we used in the malware. To be sure, I prefer to copy the payload from the fat rat terminal and paste it. Set lhost, the IP address of Kali, and L port. Remember, that was 7777. Start the handler. Go to the Windows machine and run the malware by double clicking on it. Back to the Kali machine, and a new Meterpreter session is open. Now we can say, victory is ours. Now he's taking the secret shots from the infected machine. So, so you can take easily secret shot, you can take you can uh, audio recording, you can get uh, keystrokes, which is the case in the demo as well, uh, starting keylogger, uh, and let's assume you're entering your detail into NHS webmail system. Uh, since keylogger is there, you can take the password. Uh, and all the other details. You might have a question here, like we are running the malware by just clicking on the system. We just shorten uh, the process. It's not a difficult process again. We will show you how to run the malware on the victim's machine as well. And this is mostly going through the phishing emails, official looking emails. Now we will create another scenario. We will show you another scenario uh, that we will be sending uh, official looking email and I will be given the rate of the success of the click clicking of uh, phishing emails. Now we will try to get some credentials, some important data through phishing email in the second demo. Credential Harvester Attack. In this attack, first we should choose a website which has a login sequence that the victims often visit. The toolkit prepares the clone of that website and serves it at the server. Our trap is ready and starts to collect the inputs of the victims. When a victim visits our website, he or she will face exactly the same page that he or she visits often. The victim enters the credentials and we collect them. Social Engineering Toolkit is installed and ready to use in Kali. It's defined in the path so you can start the toolkit anywhere using set toolkit command. Choose social engineering attacks option in the main menu, that's number one. As the attacked vector, select website attack vectors, that's number two. And our attack method is the credentialed harvester, number three. 
This menu is the list of the phishing website creation methods. Let's choose Site Cloner, number two. We need to have a website where the victims visit and log in often. I want to find a login page for the NHS. Googling for NHS and login keywords, email.nhs.net seems good. Post back IP address is used for what IP the server will post to. Now this is the URL to clone. I use email.nhs.net. The program continues and asks for starting Apache server if it's not running at the moment. Answer Y for yes. And the trap is ready. The site's cloned, Apache server started, and the credential harvester is listening to the inputs now. As the victim, when we visit the malicious website, we will see exactly the same page with email.nhs.net. Enter the username and password, click Sign In. Our malicious website redirected the victim to the original page, email.nhs.net. It's a good idea. The victim will not be in any doubt about the fraud. Turn back to the attacker system, Kali, and you'll see the credentialed information entered by the victim. Now, this is the email, official looking email. It's uh, like pretending to be coming from uh, the NHS security team and asking for important security update. And it's also, uh, there's a PS, so please not share your password and visit the page yourself. Uh, so it's, there's also uh, important security warnings here. So that's totally uh, looking official NHS Digital there. And only thing you need to be careful with the domain. And when you uh, come to, normally it's forwarding to that IP, but it looks email.nhs.net. So probably we will have high success rate for clicking. So we perform phishing and they clicked, we display them a clone website, they thought uh, it's safe, and they enter their credentials, then we collect the credentials, then we forwarded him to real page, and he thought there's a problem with the system, so he re-entered the credentials. So it's that easy. And as you remember, click rates was 53. Yeah. And now, in terms of the solution and the investments, this is also important data. I'm naming this distribution as mal distribution of cybersecurity investments, kind of mal, uh, maybe lag. Uh, so 60% are being done on secure infrastructure, secure network architecture, softwares. 28% is for keeping systems up to date. 52% of investments, just 52, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, just 12% was strength, strengthening the common layer. So though 91% of the successful cyber attacks was caused by phishing emails, was caused by common factor. Uh, so there are two basic solutions, actually two basic missing components of security structure. Uh, first, you need to track the security awareness of your employees. You need to keep them training, don't leave them, follow with certain KPIs, keep them training all the time and attack to your own systems before hackers attack. And that basically taking your cybersecurity test and audits. That part is uh, quite, I can say, uh, followed uh, by the organizations. But the second part, security awareness, is not just uh, one-time training. You need to keep tracking uh, them with the KPIs.